<laughs> oh, so you're fine. You're, 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 you're great. You look amazing. It's fine. No, 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 right. no, no. But you actors, you always do this. You always want to look better. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. It's great. Oh, no, no, no worries. Okay, so we are on now. We are live on Facebook. Hey, guys. Uh, good afternoon again. And good morning in California. Good morning in the States. And good afternoon. Yes, yeah, it's, 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 it's Paul. George, thank you. How are you doing? I am loving life. It is an honor. Thank you so much for being here. And uh, man, I did not know uh, that you were already live when I was talking about your beautiful shirt. So, all right, thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> that's okay, that's okay. <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> thank you for all having right, me, I'm humble. Thank you, how are you doing? Okay, great. So I've been I've been looking forward to this conversation since we we, we spoke and uh, you know because I am an entrepreneur as well I'm a film entrepreneur as well here in Ghana and um, I try my possible best to see how best I can sustain my business and I've seen I've seen I've grown I've seen a lot of businesses that and a lot of film companies that I grew up watching their products have all are all faded out they are nowhere to be found today. Okay, and so when I sit down, I'm thinking to myself, what happened? What went wrong? Why isn't that, you know, just like in California, as you are in Hollywood, you know, we have studios being able to, you know, create a legacy. Even when um, Warner Bros. died, uh, you know, the company is still running. When, when the, the heads of these big studios die or they pass away, the studios still run with or without them. How is it done? How is it possible? How are they able to leave that legacy enough that they don't have to be around for the products to exist? You understand? And so that is the, 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 the major reason why we don't have this conversation today, so that our you know people on Facebook and social media can pick up some, you know nuggets here and there to to see how they can apply it to their own film businesses and so good afternoon to everybody who's watching us live on facebook my name is Chris Bush, and this is let's talk film and i have one of the amazing producers right now in california right with me jay i'm going to ask you to just introduce yourself and tell us about who you are and what you've done so far and then we jump into the conversation great thank you so much i really appreciate this opportunity and uh, maybe you don't see it now because the way I explain it to people is um, I was a soldier in the army. So right now it's as mm -hmm. if you are a soldier in the foxhole and there's smoke around you. You can't really see the clear what's going on. But if you take a few moments and you slowly take a step back and you look at the entire battlefield as the general and you see all of the soldiers in the foxhole, then I think you can get a more clear vision. That's, that's gonna be a big step of it is clarity. Do, you, do we have a clear vision? And you're talking about building a legacy. Legacy is about one thing, it's about vision. And, and you have to be a forward thinker. And it's not just about having the vision, but it's also uh, having the intelligence to connect the dots, to put that vision into action. Uh, and and the, a very simple way to break it down uh, would be, would be um, a vision statement, a vision statement. You as an actor, you should have a vision statement. Every business, your business, your Casting Africa business should have a mission statement and a vision statement. The mission statement is a right now, right here today, if I have 100 employees, and before they go out here and interact with any of my clients or any of my customers, they read the mission statement and they say, okay, that's my mission. If I'm doing that, I'm doing a good job. If the mission is serve customers with a smile, as long as I don't care what I'm doing, as long as they're serving that customer with a smile, they're doing the mission. They're doing today's mission. But if your vision, Steve Jobs, he had a vision for Apple. So even when he dies, Apple carries on because his vision statement was so powerful. So when people are trying to build a legacy, they should take more time, pay more attention and, and really figure out what is their legacy? What is their vision? And even if they're not in the room, even if they're not on this earth, 
their children have instructions. Everybody has instructions forever what the vision is for this company when it began. Just like in the 60s when, when uh, Ghana was going through their revolution and became a country and setting up, those people had a vision for, for, the, for Ghana. It's the actors and the production companies they are not putting enough attention and time and seriousness into this and they expect everything to come, but it's the wrong approach. They have to take the time to really think about their vision. The reason a lot of these companies got wiped away is because they were not prepared for COVID. They were not prepared for coronavirus. Well, guess what? Fulton Film Company is going up. We took on four new projects during coronavirus. We went up because we were prepared to operate without a brick and mortar building. Our entire network is through Africa, Asia, you know, everywhere that, that we have contacts, Puerto Rico here, there, I mean, anywhere. It's, it's done without a brick and mortar infrastructure. So the fact that some people are like, man, there's no studio. Well, go build one if you think that's a good idea. I think it's a bad idea. So anyways, back to your original question, a little bit about me. But I was waiting to jump in. <laughs> Sorry about that, man. I apologize. Don't worry. That was great. I produce anything I could get my hands on. Anything I could get my hands on, I will produce it. And to prove my point, let me see here. I was doing a deal this morning, okay? This deal was in the Gambia. The Gambia. For 250 Delasi, we booked the deal for a video. You know how much that is? That's less than $5. That's less than five US dollars. The same video that we will charge a person in the USA for $500, we do the same video for a client in the Gambia for five US dollars because that's how much money they have there. So we're, we're working with them. Fulton Film Company is helping them to promote their business, create adverts, create more income for themselves. And we're not charging them US prices. We're charging them Gambian prices. Anybody can do that. Anybody can do that. Somebody in Ghana can do that, but they don't want to because they see themselves as like they're Spielberg already. We should localize the business. If you localize, you will be profitable. The internet helps you localize the entire earth. So you could be booking your customers in California. You could yeah. be getting your, your clients from California. You should be on Facebook only talking to people in Florida or Texas. What? You're, you're fighting the wrong battle a lot of the times. You're, you're arguing with the Directors Guild of Ghana or the, the Film Commission. Uh, so bring me to a point. There's a film authority. There's supposed to be a film authority, correct? In Ghana? Yeah, yeah, there's 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 supposed to be. Okay. Uh, there is the film there's, there is a film authority, which was just inaugurated um, last December. So yeah, okay. they are not finding is their feet. There, is there an official film commission? A film commissioner? Yes, there is a an, an ES. We don't call it a film commission, it is the authority. So we have the chairman for the authority, and then we have the executive secretary for the authority as well. Okay. The film authority, the film commission, okay? Do not put any faith in them. And it's not just Ghana. This is California, this is USA, this is everywhere. So it's not, this is not a, a hit for your local area it's Market, not yeah. it's not the film commission is normally not a working filmmaker they don't understand the current trend of right now what's going on with film they're a political party they serve political parties we do not we're filmmakers we serve art we serve the story we serve the story only. We're trying to bring something to life. We're trying to bring humans on an emotional journey. The film commission, they're not in the process of the emotional journey. Not in California, they're not. 
So I don't know about your area. Maybe your film authority is different, but ours, they're not involved in that process. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, I get it. Yeah. So, yeah. so this is a big mistake when actors and producers and everybody, they're like, oh, you guys, you're not doing nothing. You're not, you're not doing anything for us. You're not doing, they won't do anything for you. Don't expect anything from them. <laughs> and then what's the next step? What's the, what's the solution? What do you think is a solution to something like this? If they won't, if, if they will not take action to help the filmmakers, what do you think is a solution? The, 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 then a, the best thing that uh, can happen is that the filmmakers themselves begin to rely on themselves and you know come together and begin to force a way forward for themselves because they understand their passion, they understand their dream. And so they can far more better think for you know, what future they are, they are, they are looking for. Dude, you're an intelligent guy. <laughs> the problem is the solution. You're right. <laughs> you have more, you have more understanding. We call it the thumb on the pulse. You have your thumb on the pulse, the heartbeat of the industry. You know what's going on. They don't. They do not. And so this is why you carry the answers. You actually know how to navigate these waters. Another major point I would like to make with you is whether you're Warner Brothers, whether you're NBC Universal, anybody, big company, you have the same opportunity as Kwasi and with George today because COVID-19 happened, nobody's business model is foolproof. Everybody's in shambles. Everybody is upside down. Everybody is starting from step number one. So you and your thoughts with your team, if you're like, you know what? Yeah, I'm going to do that. No, we're going to move this way. We're going to do this with George. We're doing that with Rootflix. We're going to get Netflix. We're getting impact release and you create your own e ecosystem, your own structure of, of film distribution, film exhibition, live video uh, adverts. You might have the next best thing. You're creating the next Uber of film. It's not the film commission. They don't have that type of wherewithal. They don't know how to do that. You do. You do, but they don't. So have the confidence, have the self-esteem, have the heart to know that I will be rooting for you. Everybody who sees somebody doing something like that, we're going to be championing for you. We want you to win because this is the right answer. The, the government entities, they don't know what to do right now. They get funding. They get money. We know, how to, we know how to create projects. We know how to do things without money. So imagine the first time somebody gives you money you're going to go all the way up. You, you're going to operate smooth, right? Definitely, definitely. Because, you know, we know the know-how. We, 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 we get our hands dirty, so we know, yes. we know how to do that. You have the contacts with the makeup artist. You have the contact with the guy who brings the food. You have the contact with the guy. He has the best camera. You have everything. The guys that sitting up there, they don't have, what do they have? nothing <laughs> so i want i want everybody but this only works if everybody is awake on the team everybody must be awake on the team you see here on my wall you see these headshots for the actors and the filmmakers you see that right if if an actor did not give their photo or send their photo a headshot to a producer or a casting director or sign up with a casting agency like you who will, who will, who will book them? How will they get work? <laughs> right? Yeah. So if you're an actor and you didn't send your, your headshot to a producer, these people, they send me their headshot. That's why they're on my wall. It's very simple. <laughs> it's very simple. So tell me, how does your business work? So, so the people who is talent, who are actors, they can also, maybe people from the United States will start to get on your casting platform. And now you can have a international talent available. Yeah. So what 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 basically for for me? I'm very much concerned because George, I I, I want to create a, the reason why I I chose this topic is that I want to create a business that if I I pass on, will be here. And one key thing that you said is about you know having that vision that vision so strong that even when you are not around, your employees can carry that that vision and you know it can it, it can go on casting africa is basically looking to be like actors assets 
or backstage. Yeah. Um, we try to, you know, become that that casting platform for Africa, where content creators and uh, producers, casting directors, agents, agencies use our platform for their casting. So basically, that, that is a that is a straight purpose. That is the goal. We just the platform. We we help actors create a professional profile and make them available to producers like yourself for content creation. So that is what we do. Now, my fear, which which leads, leads me to my next question for you, George, is that um, how do how 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 does a film business? Okay, most of the times I find a lot, a lot a lot of film businesses start at the self-employed level, where I'm just that one man employee where I've employed myself, you know, I render services to a few clients and we never seem to go past that. Or I've established a small business, I have one or two employees, um, you know, and then basically that is it. We are never able to expand and grow our network and, you know, build up. So I want you to take us through some pointers or something, some way that you think that would help film entrepreneurs of film businesses move away from being just just a, a self-employed or just being a small business? How do we max out our, our possibilities and our abilities to get into that mainstream uh, production? Well, I don't think the two things are different. So just to begin, uh, if you're talking about a mainstream production, you're probably talking about union work. You're talking about NBC, Warner Brothers, and this and that. Am I correct? You know, you know, going, you know, going, going large to a point where you know you have this um, because in Ghana here yeah, we don't have studios like you guys have in LA. Um, so almost everybody, every every producer in Ghana is an indie, everyone. And so, um, how do we, how do we, how, how, do how we many, grow? how many indie producers would you say there are? How many independent producers are out there? Oh, there, 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 there are a lot. I can, I can, there are hundreds of them, if not thousands, there are hundreds of them, indie producers. Like, these are the small bits. If you come to like the major indie, indie producers that you know, recognize or acclaimed ones, you can point out about uh, seven, seven of them. Okay. So we have a lot of smaller indie guys, and then we have, you know, the major indie guys who are, you know, producing consistently every year and stuff, about seven to eight, eight of them. So, so here's the thing. I would not suggest to somebody, like, you're, you're thinking by being self-employed, that's a bad thing, the way you're saying it. That's what it sounds like to me. You're thinking by, by having a no. small business, it's... <laughs> It's a bad thing. That's a, that's what you're making it sound like. Uh, you're making it seem oh, no, like no, no, a, a no, business no. is stuck. You're making no, it seem like a business is stuck. Hold on, I want I want to clear this up. You're making it seem like you're stuck if you're self-employed, no. or you're stuck if you only have one or two employees. But I don't believe that's true. So let's start there. Mm. Okay, but let me tell you why. Yeah, it's great. Let me tell you why. Who do you know, who do you know that has a business with 10 employees? Um, a few, uh, a couple of them in my contact. Okay. Yeah. The film company that you're talking about, how many employees do you envision this thing to have? Um, okay, so averagely, mostly like, for example, in Ghana, now you don't no. have you have a lot of not, uh, not in Ghana what you're talking about we want to build what you're talking about i'm creating a roadmap okay. to exactly what you're talking about right now we're creating it okay so you are talking about the, the the companies that i know that have more than 10 companies right no the one that you're talking about like to a film company that how many people do you imagine are working in this company um Okay, if you are going to go all out, you know, I'm looking at a film industry, a, a film company or a film business that has, you know, lined up writers doing writing, lined up editors doing editing. So, you know, development is ongoing. 
and then you have production ongoing. So estimatedly, you know, at least 20, 30, you know, full stuff. And then probably you, you have the other guys flying in and doing their jobs when it's required. Okay, so let's say 20, okay? Is that fair, 20 people, yeah, 20. full staff? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, cool. Okay, step number one, make a list of 10 companies that you know that you could visit and see, physically see or identify or look at and investigate who have 20 employees about 20 employees, between 20 to 30 employees. That's step one. Most people don't even understand mm -hmm. what a 20 person company is. They have no clue. 20 person company is yeah. a big deal. It's a big deal. When you're dealing with the government and you're dealing with taxes and you're dealing with payroll and you're dealing with insurance and you're dealing with benefits, it's a big deal. So, so the things that people want they're just dreaming it up in fantasy land, but they're not actually thinking about the reality of what is a 20 person company. Oh my God. Wow. That's, that's a big deal. So that's step one. Um, if I'm being a visionary and I'm thinking forward into 2025 and 2030, 2035, I'm thinking into the future. I don't want to have anything to do with a 20 person company. I want to have one person, me, I want you to hire me and my LLC, me and my S corporation, me and my C corporation. What I want you to hire me. I could build another company over there, but as far as my thing, is, mm -mm. I want only me to be working. And as a filmmaker, especially, I don't want the liability of all these 20 other yahoos out there. I don't know what they're all about. And now I'm responsible for them. No way. I don't want that. So uh, now if you want to build that back to your original thing, you guys need to get together. You need to band. You need to go get a financial institution. You need to get a, a, a somebody, a bank in Ghana who's interested in the tech space. You need to find a bank who's interested in the entertainment space. Oh, and by the way, they're out there. Netflix is there right now. Uh, there's all, you know, uh, Def Jam is there. There's a bunch of big companies there. So sitting back and waiting for them to come hire you is the wrong answer that's not how this industry works you have to do something to get the attention of them to work with them that's how it works yeah uh if you got and you're talking about oh but we don't have a studio so that's that's the ghanian people's fault uh nobody else that's just your fault because uh the business people there for the past 10 years they could have banded together you're lucky actually that a nigerian company didn't move in and set, set up shop in Ghana because they can, or a Vietnamese company, anybody. And, and it, you guys need about $5 million to build a decent sound stage that's new, visionary, COVID safe. That's nothing, it's about $5 million. And, and, and if you had 5,000 people, how many people are in your country? So we have, we have, we have about 30 million now. 30 million or 13? 30, 30 million. 30, three zero. Three zero. Wow. That's a lot. Out of those 30 million people, if you could find 5,000 people, an investment group, to donate only $1,000, you just raised your capital. You just did fundraising. You raised $5 million to build a first studio soundstage in Ghana. Dude, that's, yeah. that's this far away. Somebody could watch this video and be like, oh, no, I want to throw in one million. I want to have a stake in that thing. The reason you don't have a studio is because somebody like you did not create a business plan to have a studio. That's the bottom line. That's it. That's the only thing stopping it. But now, because COVID happened, when this studio gets built, you can have so many intelligent things the bathroom far away, the craft services far away, the, the director's video village in a separate room, COVID safe, you know, like so many things just set up to prevent communicable diseases. You can even set up the, the studio lot with housing available for the crew and the talent, and that will get Hollywood to stay there because they would want to keep the crew contained. They would want to keep the talent contained to not be traveling all over. And the blueprint, I would team up with an architect. I would team up with an architect. I would team up with a tech and an entertainment banking firm. 
And then I would create the plans. $5 million is nothing. It's nothing. With 30 million people in your country, uh, if you break it down to just the finance and business and entertainment sector, you're asking for $1,000 and it doesn't have to come from your country. People in the USA would be like, damn, that's a great investment. I want my $1,000 in there. It's like buying a stock. I'll, 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 you have my first $1,000. I want to invest in that company. The only reason it hasn't happened is because somebody did not plan for it. That's it. They did not plan for it. There is no getting stuck. If you're, if you have three or four or five clients and you're self-employed, you're doing damn good. You have to manage expectations. You have to really think, what do I think is Hollywood? How does Hollywood work? If you don't know, you have a problem. If, if you're an actor and you're not on the SAG AFTRA website, looking at all the new COVID re regulations, looking at all the pay scales, looking at everything on SAG-AFTRA, it's gonna, be, it's gonna be hard for you to speak the same language as a union in Hollywood when you're not doing union rules. So for you personally, to bring your business up to par, training, training, training. Everybody thinks they're an actor just because, yeah, I'm an actor. Well, how often are you training a basketball player, a football player? They're training for hours and hours and hours every day. An actor, they do a couple of rehearsals. They read a script a couple of times and they think they're good to go. That's not true. If you have YouTube, you have zero excuses why you're not training constantly. You should be getting with people. You should be learning. You should be elevating your game because when Hollywood shows up and they will, only a few people will be ready. Only a few people would be ready. Then the, then the next conversation is going to be, oh, look at, they're only hiring those people. Oh, you see, they have a connection. It's corruption. It's corruption. No, it's not corruption. It's, you're not trained. You're not trained. You're not teaching yourself anything. It's not corruption. So same thing with the filmmakers. Oh, I'm a filmmaker. Nobody's hiring me. Well, yeah, you're sitting there with your, uh, with, with the cannon. Hang on. This camera, this is a Canon 5D. This is like a dream camera for some, this is nothing. And, and, and if, if you're not talking about operating the RED, the RE, the Alexa, the, and you think you're a cinematographer, you think you're a camera operator, what, what will you do when Hollywood crew shows up and they have the camera and you need to be operating and you don't know anything about it? You should be spending hours and hours and hours watching YouTube videos of the operators showing you how a RE Alexa works. You should be spending hours watching uh, the F. Gary Gray, some of the best directors and watching the behind the scenes hours and taking notes, not just watching, but learning about this stuff. That is why people are stuck at any level. They, the education stops and they think they know everything and they don't. Clef, <laughs> we have a blessing. <laughs> <All right. laughs> yeah, thank you, Jay. Uh, Clef just joined us. Uh, a couple more, more of the filmmakers like that are going to try and join us as well. And then we, 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 we they, they can be asked on a couple of questions. So now let's 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 move on. So let's say, let's say, you know, I want to go out and start a film business right now, you know, like a production, a production company. What are some of the structures that you would advise that I need? to make sure that my, that film business thrives. Can you ask that again? So I'm, 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 I'm saying that, um, what are some of the structures that, you know, a company, a film business would need to thrive in the industry? Okay. You must have filmmakers on your team. Everybody must be a Swiss army knife. Everybody must have many talents and many skills. And you must have your aces in their places. You have to have the right people in the right job. Just because somebody wants to be a director, so maybe this person is very good at designing flyers, or maybe this person is very good at uh, editing video, then that's what they need to be doing. Whoever can add the most value in the quickest amount of time, you need that structure in place. You have to be diversified mm -hmm. 
You have to be diversified in your time zones. You have to know people in California. You have to know people in New York. You have to know people in Ghana. You have to know people in Asia. You want your operation moving 24 hours a day, all the time. When you're sleeping, you want people working with you. You want people working on your projects when you're sleeping. So you want everybody, you want people with throughout the whole time zones. Another structure is you need, you need financing before you start anything. Everyone says, I don't have money. Well, because I don't care. I'm just going to make my thing. I'm just going to make, okay, well, before you create a script, you should decide how will I sell this? How will I earn money? How will we break even? How will we be profitable? You have to ask all of the marketing questions, all of the money questions first, pre, pre, pre-production. You never get into production because when you're asking the money questions, you, you may identify a fatal flaw. You may identify something and look it up, fatal flaw. That's the thing that takes you out of business. But a creative person is not asking these types of questions, Quasi. They're not. They're asking, they're asking creative questions. And, and that's why they're, they're not making a connection with, this is entertainment business. This is the show business. 10% show, 90% business. And so if you don't have a strong command of business or if you don't have an ecosystem, you have to have people who fit those proper places within your structure to make this thing work. That's, that's the bottom line. Uh, talking about, um, you know, you spoke, you spoke, you spoke about uh, welfare, finance, and, 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 and what have you. So, so. Hey, one more, no, one more, no. Captain Planet. No, right now. Damn, hey, hey yeah. tell, him, tell him George says hello. Hey, George, George says one second. So, <laughs> yeah, I just got some, some, some stuff. Um, so, Jay, I was, I was going to ask how, you know, startups, companies should, should raise uh, funding for their, for their businesses. Because that is one big problem and one challenge that, you know, most production companies and agencies here face. So how do they, how, how does a startup figure out their funding? I would say the number one thing is, do you offer a factor of being unique? Do you have a differentiation factor? Does something make you different than another company? Or are you just the same like every other company? You say, oh, I need money to start my business. You need a plan. You need a strategy. Yeah. You need a plan. And you need a team to excite people. People need to get excited about your venture. If, if, you, cannot, if you cannot excite somebody and you don't have a plan and you don't have a team, you have problems. Mm. And, and the number one thing when people say, I can't get money, when I said this in film school in Hollywood to my professor, he was a big producer. I, I don't want to drop his name right now. He said, George, if, if you don't have enough money, that means you're telling me that you are not being creative enough. Sure. But, but. So the startup money, the startup money, if you have a plan, you can ask anybody. People with money want to make more money. Rich people want to be more rich. So if you're sitting there and you're like, oh, nobody's giving me money. Well, yeah, because your plan looks stupid. Your plan looks stupid. That's why I don't want to give you my money. You have to, everybody's waiting for something. But, but when I say, well, let me see that you're, let me see what you have scheduled. How do you plan on earning money back? How do you plan on operating your business? Is your business already operating? Have you proven that you can earn money with your business? If I put you on Shark Tank today, will, will they laugh you out of the room? Most of the time, they have no structure. They have no idea of how will they earn money. And they're just coming to you saying, oh, if you give me money, I will go make my movie. It's stupid. That's not a, people need to be more organized and they, they need to recruit the right people to their team. They try to recruit 20 actors and five directors. 
Who the hell wants to work with that? Actors can't make up their mind for anything. I don't, as a producer, I don't want to work with a bunch of actors. I need, I need organized people. The business side of this requires much organization and it requires to be intelligent. It requires to follow up. It requires to be on top of things. So when you're wishy-washy and you're a creative guy, this won't work for you on the business side of things. That's the number one thing. People are not prepared. They are not prepared. That's why they don't have what they have. They don't know how to ask for it. When, they, when they're prepared, you will introduce them to me and we could ask everybody. All right, great, 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 great. So um, now my last but one question. Uh, um, now, how, now that let's say I raise funding and you know, I started a business like what I'm doing right now. Now, one challenge that comes a lot for us as film entrepreneurs is uh, sustaining that business. You know, longevity is a huge problem. What are some of the suggestions that you can give, um, you know, film content creators or film entrepreneurs or film business owners to help, you know, sustain, create that longevity for the businesses that we create? If you start, if you start with bad intentions, you will never have longevity. If you violate your own integrity, if you violate your own integrity by, by trying to harass somebody or having a weird money deal or letting on your friends and, and showing favoritism and, and, and even having 1% of corruption involved, you will not have longevity. You will not. Because that person, whoever you are involved with, will talk with somebody else and that will slowly start to crack what you're building from the inside. Okay, that's number one. The other thing is the people who are involved in this business must become financially literate. Financial literacy is huge. If you don't know about compounding interest, if you don't know about how banking works, if you don't know about credit, if you don't know about lines of credit, if you don't know about these things, you will be in trouble because you don't know how money works and you're getting into a business which involves a lot of money. So at every corner, people will be taking from you because you don't understand a quarter of a point or a half a point or this or that. So if you're not speaking with somebody who's financially literate, you have a big problem for longevity. Investing, investing. Uh, you think by having a company, by owning a business, uh, you're, you're gonna have money coming in all the time, but you don't. What if your business was doing well right now? It was making $10,000 every month, okay? And then you break both hands from an accident. God forbid, you're, you're out there, you have an accident. Uh, you're on vacation, something happened. Now you cannot work, you cannot type. So your money stops. If, if you own a business, if you are a filmmaker and you are an actor and your money stops because you physically are hurt, then you don't own a business. You don't own a business. If the money stops when you stop, you are the business. You are self-employed. You do not have passive income. So you need to learn the four quadrants of money. You have to figure out being employed, self-employed, passive income, investing, all this stuff. You have to learn about a couple of these things. That is what secures your longevity. Building solid relationships with people who matter. People are, are spending too much time. How do I say this? Um, the business that we're in is called pop culture, popular. It's a popularity contest, pop culture. But because of that, they spend too much time with the high school mentality of just trying to be cool, trying to be cool with the locals, trying to be cool with your buddy, trying to be cool with this guy. If you're trying to be cool with people, forget it. There's no longevity in this business because those people who you're trying to be cool with, they will drop the ball on something along the way and soon you will no longer be able to pay them. You will no longer be able to bring them to your project because your business is growing, you're leveling up. And when you level up and your partner still did not level up with you, you can't, you can't give him money or her money and, and, and the longevity of the business uh, might suffer because you don't have a solid team. True, yeah, very true. Very, very like 
key points raised in uh, the submission. And um, thank you. So now uh, I have a lot of people asking me this this question of of you know how do I when it comes to actors and you know crew members and stuff you know they they talk about how do I cross over to Hollywood because you know Hollywood is the you know is a is a big deal for everyone. And so you are in Hollywood. How does somebody, an actor, a film person, a business owner, or whatever, how do we cross over, you know, and create that international relationship and get that those international jobs? What is what is the magic? Well, the union SAG AFTRA, remember I told you? If you're an actor and you want to work with the union, you should start studying the union, how they operate, everything about the union, because you want to be in the SAG after a union. Crossing over, you need to start playing roles. You need to start trying to get lead roles in short films, in short TV series, in uh, local feature films. Training, 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 training. This will help you cross over. You have to be in enough projects that. The producer, the director, the AD, somebody gets promoted into a union position, think of, thinks of you, and then you have a casting director. You get a casting director. You start showing up as, as an actor on, this, on these sets. In your position, by being there in Ghana, if you can prove that you're the most trained actor, you're as close to a union trained actor as what they have in Hollywood, when Hollywood shows up, they don't have another choice but to start working with you. They need talent. They need local talent. They have to work with you. So even as a filmmaker, you can cross over just like this. Go use the same plan for the $5 million that I told you to raise the studio money. Raise the $5 million and, and make your project a SAG project. You go, you go, you send them an email. You say, hey, I want to make this a SAG project. I want to use SAG actors. You make your project a union project, you follow the union rules, you pay their fees, and now you become a union. You could bring in IATSE, you could bring in the DGA, you could hire people from the union. It's not, it's not that big of a deal. If, if you go to Los Angeles, if you move to California, you work your way through the system. You, you go become a, a second assistant director, you become an assistant director, you, become, you, know, you work your way up through the ranks if you want to go through the DGA or become a cinematographer, the local 600, all these different unions available. But for actors, SAG-AFTRA is the only union that you're talking about uh, that where they're going to get on the type of projects that I'm assuming you're talking about. Hello, hello, Jay. Hello, Jay. Yes, I'm here. Yeah, I had, I had, I had uh, some partners walking to the office, <laughs> crazily. Okay, that's okay. Sorry, my bad, my bad. I'm just, I just want to wrap up uh, with you. They just walked in on me, so I had to. Sure, just, sure. Yeah, send them to the other side. Yeah, <laughs> so let's let's just wrap wrap this up. Um, you've said some very amazing stuff, and I and I know that people who are watching now have taken myself. I have you. You, you have no idea the stuff that you said tonight. And so I just want to first thank you and thank you for some of the straight straightness and the frankness of, of the stuff that you, you know, you've delivered tonight. 
And for me, it, it has altered the way I look at things, especially when it comes to, you know, dealing with these authorities and dealing with all of these people and, you know, talk, talking about us as filmmakers coming together to find a way to begin to build this project on our own for ourselves. So I just want, want you to um, leave us with your three, your, your top three, your top, your top three pointers, three key things that a film business owner or anybody who wants to start up a film business should be looking at and must do just the next two, three minutes. You should learn about entertainment business. You should, number one is investigate other businesses that you think you want to be like. You have to research the companies. You have to find a list of 10 companies who you think you want to be like and be obsessed with researching them. That's number one. So you get a lot of insight and information. Number two, you need to find the right people for the right position within your network. You have to build the right ecosystem. You have to have the right people around you. If the mindset is off, if the vibe is off, if, yeah, this person's really smart and they're really highly skilled, but they're not with the program, they're not moving in your direction, that person's highly skilled, but they're a problem for you. Number three, you must become financially literate. If you are financially illiterate and you don't know how money works and you don't know how finances work and you don't know how to turn a profit with a little bit of things that you're doing, you will never be profitable. You will never make it to a level of success that you think you should be at. Recently, we, uh, that, those are the three things. Recently, we partnered up with Till Sunset from Ghana. And the reason that happened is because the quality of the content they didn't wait to go to the film authority. They didn't wait for this. They, they got, they, uh, Clef called uh, Roderick and he started writing. They started creating this project. They got executive producers. They figured out how to do it. They got this thing on YouTube and there's a California producer watching it. And I loved it so much that Till Sunset is, is on my list now. It's on my wall in California. I'm producing it. We have an agreement. I'm going to be raising money for that movie. I want to make the feature film of that movie based on a YouTube video that I watched. I watched a YouTube video that was filmed in Ghana, but when I watched it, I say, you know what? Wow, these people took the time. They took the time to appreciate the art. They took the time to appreciate camera, to appreciate story. The acting was phenomenal. The acting was so good. The, the work is good. Your work speaks for yourself. When you're talking, you're just talking. Uh, when you say I'm an actor, I'm a this, I'm that. I'm like, okay, send me the video, send me the link. Till Sunset is the reason why they're working with, a, is why they got a deal with a, with a California production company because of what they already put out. That's how easy it is. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Who is that? Bring him in, bring him in. Uh, There's one of my senior colleagues. <laughs> bring him in. Yeah, right, okay. <laughs> I don't know you can see you. Uh, yeah. uh, <laughs> What's up? How are you? Thank you. What is he? California, Hollywood. Producer. Producer. Yeah, he's a producer. So also producer director. Okay. So he's uh he's one of the one of the yeah he's one of the biggest he's one of uh his name is Dixon uh one of the top top directors as well. So it's a pleasure to meet you. Pleasure to meet you. Let us meet you. Oh, I'm glad to meet you too, boss. I think he, he's, he's, he's going to send, I'm, I'm, going to, I'm going to make him send you some of his projects. He's done a series and a, feature, and a feature film recently. So I'm going to make him send you some samples. Uh, some, some day, YouTuber. Yeah. So he's, he's going to send you some, some stuff and then you can take a look at it. Let, let me leave you with this one. Let me leave you with this one. Last. We have contact with Amazon Prime Direct to get contact to Amazon, okay? The problem is people are wearing shirts with logos or people are wearing hats or people are wearing something. So when they create the content, you have to start to be careful of the, of the licensing problems. This is a big issue, okay?
Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm Josh, a Josh, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, it's been a great, great conversation today. Um, and I really, really appreciate your time. We are going to find some more time uh, very soon. And we're going to have this conversation again on a different topic, I, I believe, because I want to ask how you are envisaging the co-production with the Ghanaian companies and what your plan is and how, how you're intending to raise capital for the, for the film uh, you, are, you are looking at producing. All right. It's too easy. It's too easy. Uh, their content speaks for themselves. It, it will be easy to find an investor. Thank you, sir. Well, I, I'm, I'm looking right. forward to that talk. I would love to speak more to you about it. All right. Good Thank night. you very much, George. You're welcome. Good night.